Hey folks, Tim here from Rock Out Videography again. Today we're going to be talking about those mysterious foam blocks and wraparound bands you sometimes see on a base. What are they for? What's the history behind these and why would you want one? Stick around, we're going to answer these questions and show you some DIY solutions you can create, sometimes with stuff you probably already have. You already know from the video's title that we're talking about mutes, sometimes referred to as dampeners. Mutes on string instruments go back a long way and have been used on violins, cellos, and basses since the 17th century. Palm muting is a technique used on guitars and basses in contemporary music, and some people believe that you should be using correct palm muting techniques rather than using a mute. Using a mute will reduce or eliminate the ringing, resonance, and overtones produced by your bass strings and can also give the notes a more staccato sound. In some ways, mutes can have an effect similar to a compressor, but can also reduce sustain. The very first mass-produced solid-body electric bass, 1951 Fender Precision Bass, had a foam strip glued to the inside of the bridge cover. Legend has it that this was done in an attempt to more closely mimic the sound of an upright bass, which is what most people were used to hearing back in those days. This continued on with the post-1956 precision basses. When the jazz bass was first released, it had individual spring tension foam strips screwed into the body just forward of the bridge. 1964, it transitioned to having a foam strip inside the bridge cover, just like the P bass. The use of mutes on basses was very common in the 1960s, and studio recording legends like Carol Kay, James Jamerson, Bob Babbitt, Joe Osborne, and Ray Pullman used their mutes on their basses most or all the time. The use of mutes eventually became less popular and not seen as much today. There have been several versions of adjustable mutes invented over the years. The Rickenbacker Model 4000 bass had an adjustable mute added to it shortly after it was introduced. There are many commercially available bass mutes and wraps available these days, but there are several easy ways to make a DIY mute that works great. Tony Levin famously used one of his daughter's diapers to mute his bass strings on Peter Gabriel's song Don't Give Up from the 1986 album So. Tony says he just shoved the diaper under the strings near the bridge. Let me show you what a mute sounds like, and we'll talk about how you can easily make your own. But first, if you could hit the subscribe and like buttons, it will help us reach our subscriber goal and get our videos out to more people. Thanks. All right, here we go. So this is what we're doing. I've got a Squire Affinity PJ bass with round wounds, since most of you folks are probably using round wounds. And I'm using my Joya Wireless to go into the trusty old Fender Rumble 30. So this is, this is what it sounds like without any kind of muting. Right, and then here the strings ring. And sustain, okay. So the first mute, and the, the easiest, I think, and the kind that I use is just a piece of foam. So this is a piece of half-inch foam. And what you do is you just cut it. The width of a bridge on a four-string bass is going to be about three inches. If you're playing a five-string bass, just add extra width to this. Measure your bridge, whatever you need to do, all right? But it's real simple. It's about two inches wide or deep, however you want to put it. You just you fold it in half. and you just slip it under the strings. Even it out. There we go. And just tuck it right up under the bridge. So now this is what it sounds like with muting. Right? and. So that's a basic difference that a mute can make. Now I've got another DIY solution for you right here. And that is to just take a piece of cloth. Again, this one was about 11 inches and uh, I cut it to three inches wide. So you just roll it up. And again, you're just gonna slip it right under the strings, just forward to the bridge. There we go. <laughs> and I've I've seen um, I've seen some people discuss using like a flannel to do this. Keep in mind, like we talked about, Tony Levin used a baby diaper to get this effect, right? So and the 
strings. See, it's, it's again, it, it, it kind of is like compression. Not exactly, but it, it's similar in sound. That staccato kind of sound that you get. All right, here's another one. And this is what's referred to as the Carol K mute. So what she would do, and again, I don't know if Carol K invented this or she learned it from someone else, but she is certainly famous for using this technique. She may have invented it. And I saw an interview once where she described how to do this. And if you see interviews with her, and you should be watching them, you'll, you'll see this on her base. So basically, again, about a two inch by three inch piece of felt cut out, and then you, you put a piece of masking tape on it, and you, you just fold it over like that. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna just, again, right in front of the bridge, you're gonna lay it across the strings and tape it down to your base. Like that, right? So here's what it sounds like. Less overtones, less ringing. It sounds good. All right, so that's some examples of how you can dampen or mute your bass at the bridge. Another common way of accomplishing this is to use what's called a fret wrap, okay? And this is, again, like microfiber cloth with something in it and then a strap. So what you do is you just put it around. <laughs> Bear with me. You just put it around your neck up there by the nut. Right? There you go. And the one thing to watch out for, and what I don't like about this, is that it's, it's interfering sometimes with your fingering up here, or maybe not. As with any technique you practice, and you're going to get good at it, but... Right? And then some people will move it up the neck depending on what they're doing, if they're doing tapping. The way you can make one of these yourself, really simple. So again, I, I just I cut out a piece of microfiber cloth from the same piece. Again, it's three inches wide, about 11 inches rolled up. And you add your Velcro uh, cable strap, which is fuzzy on one side and hook on the other. And the hook side is going to attach really well to the microfiber and you put it across the seam so that it doesn't unravel. And we're just gonna do the exact same thing with this, right? We're just gonna put that strap right across, and there you go, DIY fret wrap. Another really easy, uh, I'm sorry, easy DIY solution for uh, a fret wrap is uh, what Victor Wooten does. Victor Wooten just buys a cheap hair tie and he just puts it over his, uh, his, his headstock and you can rest it up here. And then he does a really cool thing where he puts it on the 17th fret and gets a harmonic. So there you go. There's some DIY solutions. Try some of these out. See how they work for you and how they sound. And perhaps, uh, especially in recording sessions, it might be something that's really useful for you. As you can see, a mute can be a very useful tool, especially if you're going for that classic Motown sound. Some people really appreciate the way it helps when tapping as well. Try one of the DIY solutions we demonstrate and see if you like what it does. If you do like it, you might consider buying one of the commercially available options. One thing to be aware of, though, is that a mute may affect your tuning and intonation, so you may need to make some setup adjustments or check your tuning. Okay, folks, it's time for... The Future YouTube Artist of the Week! Yay! This week's featured artist is Serene Dominic. Full disclosure, Serene is a friend of mine and the OG guitarist from my band, The Burn Lackers. Jim Dustin plays bass in one of his bands. Serene has been a figure in the local Phoenix music scene for several decades now. I can remember reading his newspaper reviews of local bands in the 1990s, long before I ever met him. 
Serene has a very unique sense of humor and is fearless in his projects. He's involved in multiple bands and his Human Torch karaoke show that he live streams on Facebook on Thursday nights is a lot of fun. Imagine a fictional character with multiple personality disorder who is alternately possessed by the Beatles, Elvis Costello, the entire Motown session musician cast, and a musically inclined prison convict. Serene has over 189 videos on his channel. Go to his channel, subscribe, watch his videos, and leave him comments after hitting the like button. He's an incredibly talented and hardworking creator who also happens to be a really nice guy. Let's get him the subscribers he deserves. Leave us a comment and let us know if you have any experience using mutes and what applications you find the most useful for. We'd also like to see if you have any DIY mute ideas that we didn't cover. As always, we appreciate everyone who's been subscribing to the channel, liking our videos, and interacting with us in the comments section. We hope you found this video both informative and entertaining. Until next week, have a great day.